Hello, I'm Julie and welcome to Chicory's Travels. Today I want to talk a little bit about our tips for RV trip planning. I handle the bulk of the itinerary planning at least and the places that we're going to stay for our RV travels and so I'm going to walk you through that process today and share with you some of the tips and uh, tools and applications and websites that I use and give you my process but what I hope is that you will, in the comments down below, give me your tips and idea. One thing that we really love about RV travel is all the amazing people that we meet and we learn from each other and the place that we're at right now, we're boondocking in this absolutely amazing place in Arizona and we got the GPS coordinates from other RVers. So please share your tips and ideas down below. Um, as I go through this process, I'm also going to share my screen when I talk about uh, computer programs and even a real handy little book that I have because I also like to have a paper product with me in case we're uh, arriving at a campground and I don't have good Wi-Fi. Maybe I can't pull up my confirmation. I have it written down as well. So I'm going to walk you through all of that and hope it helps you in your travels. The first thing that I do when I'm trip planning is just getting a basic idea of where I want to go. So I'll give you an example of right now. Um, this summer, I'm planning right now for this summer, so it's February, and I'm going ahead and making my reservations a few months out. Now the reason why I do that is because we have a 44 foot fifth wheel. So it's a very large RV, and there's a lot of campgrounds that we just can't fit into. So that kind of lowers the pool of available places. And uh, I can also be kind of a little bit of a princess. <laughs> I like to have swimming pools and hot tubs and good Wi-Fi and a good location. And so that again, even narrows down the pool of available places that we can stay at. So I need to reserve them in advance basically is, is the point. Now, people ask me, though, doesn't that take away the spontaneity or, uh, you know, what if you change your mind? And what I do is I have a rule that you can't, that I'll make a reservation, but only if there's no more than a $15 penalty for canceling it. And the reason why I do that is because then it gives me options and I feel like that $15 is worth the peace of mind. So right now I'm making reservations for this summer. And one of the things that I will look at is their cancellation policy. And as long as I can get a full refund, unless it's like a $10 to $15 reservation fee, then I'm going to be okay with that. And that's going to allow me to have a little more options and a little peace of mind that I have a place to stay. So where we're planning on going is I already have reservations at the Crescent City Redwoods KOA. So you can see on my screen now what I've done is I'm just using Google Maps here. And this isn't what we're going to use when we plan our actual drive in the RV. Uh, for that, you want to use an RV GPS or an app. Like we have an app. I think it's around $50. It's called Copilot. And it's the same concept as an RV GPS. You put in the height and the weight and the length of your RV and it helps give you that actual route. But what I'm doing right now is just trying to get a rough idea. So you can see I have reservations at the Crescent City Redwoods KOA and I also have reservations down here in, I think it's pronounced Vacaville, California. It's actually an Air Force Base we're staying at. But I had a week in between and I was trying to decide where to go. And I was like, oh, I want to go to Crater Lake National Park. I've never been there before. So one thing I would do is actually go on the website of that national park to see on the off chance if we could fit. But usually with a 44-foot fifth wheel, it's not going to be an option. Um, so then I'll also look to see what's close by. I did find when I went on the website of Crater Lake National Park that their camping season doesn't start until May 25th and I'm trying to find a place to go when my reservation ends at the Crescent City KOA on uh, May 16th. So what I do is I use a website called Campendium. That's C-A-M-P-E-N-D-I-U-M. And you can see it on my screen here now. And all I do is type in where I want to go. So you see here, Crater Lake, Oregon. 
And this is a free program to use, and it also has an app that you can do on your phone. I like to do it on my computer just because it's a little bit larger and I can open different applications to look at things. Now you notice here, you can even um, sort these things. So you can sort by distance, category, and by category they mean are you looking for an RV park, public lands. It even helps you find things like uh, dump stations. So in this case, I'm going to say public lands because I'm staying at a KOA before this and a military campground afterwards. So I want to try to maybe find a state park that uh, we can fit our fifth wheel in or maybe even a core of engineer campgrounds. You can also sort by price so you could go free or low or maybe I'll even just go, you know, two dollar signs. You can go by hookups if you want full partial 50 amp or dry camping. I'm not going to bother with that right now. Usually we go full hookups, but since it's a week, I'm going to um, live a little and see what my options are. And then you can even go by recreation. Um, if you're a member of discount clubs, you can click those as well. But I'm going to just kind of leave it open and see what's going on here. And, you know, here's an option here, a Farewell Bend Campground. It's a national forest. And you can just click on each one of these and kind of see what your different options are. This one looks kind of interesting, Joseph A. Stewart State Park. Now you notice it has five stars. I, I want to talk about reviews for just a minute. I love Campendium to kind of give me a start, but I don't end there with my campground reviews. Now we've been traveling full time for four and a half years and only once ever, and it was in the very beginning, did we ever roll into a campground and roll right back out because it just wasn't a place that we felt comfortable in. It, it didn't have what we wanted. And the problem with that one time was I really didn't do a lot of research in terms of reviews. I just saw it in the Passport America book. That's one of the clubs that we're a member of. And it uh, was in a location that was good and I just went for it. But what I do now, because I want to be a little more comfortable, is I actually look at reviews. So I will look at the reviews on Campendium, but I don't stop there. Because if you look at my screen, only four people have reviewed this. I mean, it's an Oregon State Park. There has to be more reviews than just four, right? So first I'm just going to get some basic idea and if I think it's a potential, then I'm going to go to some other websites for reviews. And one of those is campgroundreviews.com. There's an app also. Um, it's the same thing, but the app now is called RV Life. So when I look for a campground on campground reviews, I have never booked at a campground that's less than an 8 rating. It's between a 1 and 10, and I never pick one that's less than an 8, and I have never been unsatisfied. So this one is an 8.9. It's excellent. Now another thing is I look to see that there's at least 10 reviews. I kind of prefer more. Um, for a public campground, I'm going to expect at least probably 50 reviews. But for a state park, this isn't bad. 19 reviews. I have 19 here and I have four from Campendium. And you'll just look down here. So one thing I like about campground reviews is it tells you, like, right off the bat, you know there's no pull-throughs, there's no full hookups, and there's no 50 amp. It's only 30 amp. Because of our setup, that's going to be okay. So this what I like here about campground reviews is these are the types of things that I would have on my checklist. And when you're doing your trip planning, you're going to want to look at your checklist. What are the things that are important to you? If I'm staying for a month, it needs to have 50 amp. Even though we have um, a solar setup where we can do solar power, if I'm going to be there for a month, I don't want to have to rely on that solar for a whole month. If I'm going to be there for a month, it needs to have sewer and water. So I'm saying I want full hookups, right? But if I'm only staying for a week, like this case, I'm looking more for location. I want to be near Crater Lake. And um, I want to stay in an Oregon State Park because I haven't stayed in one before. So this is going to be okay for me. I don't, I don't mind that it doesn't have sewer or full hookup. I'm going to hope that it has a dump station because that'll make life a little bit easier. But let's look at some of the reviews. 
And here's one of the things I really like about this website, Campground Reviews, which is called RV Life in the app. And that is that people give really detailed reviews. And to me, that's more important than the stars. It's more important for me to read what they're saying and see if those things that they either like or don't like matter to me. And an example of that is we just stayed at a KOA in Tucson. I absolutely loved it. It was my favorite campground of 2018. One of the negative comments in the review was that it was too loud because it was right near the Air Force Base and you could hear these planes flying all day. Well, I love it. I'm, Sean and I are retired Air Force. You guys know we've both served 20 years in the Air Force. So I'm like, that's the sound of freedom. I love listening to jet planes. So bring it on. You know, if that's the only bad thing about that campground, I'm really going to like it. So we actually sat outside quite a bit and watched, um, especially the A-10s, but there were a lot of other planes flying around. We enjoy it. So something that was a negative to one person can be a positive to someone else and vice versa. So read the reviews. So let's look here at, at like one of these reviews. I, I looked to see if they were kind of recent. This one was in August. It said that it's on the southern edge of a reservoir. It's surrounded by heavily forested mountains. It's adjacent to a full service marina and it's only a 40 mile drive from Crater Lake National Park. So, so far to me, it sounds really good. It also tells you that the it has a dump station um, places to hike and bike and then they even give you drawbacks and and that's what I love people are, are so detailed in their reviews here and I try to add to that also when I stay at a place so summer temps can get pretty hot we're gonna be there in May that's all right weekend reservations are suggested so I'm gonna need to make a reservation I'll have to look and see what their cancellation policy is and then the other thing I like about this is people put their own photos so you get an idea to see the actual size of them and you can just go through and read all the reviews oh like this one tells you here no lake access so if you're going there because you think it's on a lake you know you want to know that um, here tip for camper not a bad choice to visit crater lake nicer than some of the commercial choices so that is kind of my process i use campendium first to find campgrounds in the area and a third site that I like to use for reviews and to find things to do in the area is TripAdvisor. So what was the name of this place? I'm just going to copy the name of it. Joseph Stewart, or, or you could just put State Recreation Area, but let's just put that. Joseph Stewart State Recreation Area, and let's see if it comes up in TripAdvisor. And TripAdvisor is also great for campground reviews because people leave a lot of comments and and the thing I really like about it is you can even send, if you have a, a login to TripAdvisor, you can send a message to people and ask them, like, what did you mean by, you know, a certain comment that they've made? And they don't always answer, but I, probably about 50% of the time. So I like it. So here I'm seeing that um, they do have it in TripAdvisor. And it has 43 reviews. It's number 13 of 24 things to do in the Crater Lake area. This one says, like, it's a great place to park, lots of large campsites with or without hookups, social camping at its best, great place to camp if you're visiting Crater Lake. Oh, they even have a bathhouse that shows. So it's just giving me a little more detail and kind of confirming that I'm happy. I'll also look here. I like this about TripAdvisor. You see it tells you how many in each category. So I'll even sometimes just look at the negative ones just to see what they're saying. So this person says it was because it's too little privacy. The campsites in themselves are quite exposed, no clear delineations between them. So often in a state park, you might have more nature, maybe trees in between you and things like that. And they're saying it kind of feels a little more like a commercial campground. I don't mind that. I stay in a lot of those. So I think it's a winner. Now, another thing on the on the list here would be to make sure that it's in your budget. So I showed you about how in Campendium I could actually sort on that. And then it shows you the nightly rate in here. So let you know that if it's within your budget and it has those things that you want. 
Now, last thing I might do if I'm looking in an area and I'm not finding anything that like really jumps out to me, or say I go to this one and I can't make reservations, then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a Facebook group and ask people. I might ask them on my page, Chickory's Travels, but I also really love this Facebook group called Where You Stay RV. And I'll down below I'll put the spelling of it so you know exactly how to get there. This is a very positive site. No trolls are allowed. And the great thing about it is you can search on a certain area. And I did that. I searched like uh, Crater Lake, I think, was my terms, or maybe Coastal Oregon. And then I found some people who had posted some photos that they went last year. And then I just commented on this woman. And I said, hey, I see you went last year and that you have a similar sized RV. Now, I'm a bit of a princess and like, you know, nice places. So can you give me some recommendations of what your top choices were? And she totally did. People share photos and it's like real people giving you, uh, again, reviews really. So I, I really like that aspect and it makes me feel very confident when I'm going to a campground if it's going to work for me or not. Um, then the last thing is how do I keep track? So just to let you know, I'm going to skip ahead. I did go ahead and go to the website for this particular uh, campground, this state park, Joseph H. Stewart State Park. I was able to get reservations for seven nights, so I'm super excited about it. And then what I do is I have a spreadsheet that I keep track on. So in the past, this is the way I was keeping track. I would just have a spreadsheet here that says where we're gonna be on what night. And so the yellow highlighted is where I haven't made reservations yet. But this one I was able to go ahead and fill in right here, I'm staying here, and what my confirmation was. So I usually put the price and everything on there. But I like to have something in writing too. So I, I used to kind of print this out and the print's really small. Um, but I found this new tool that I'm so excited about. It's called the Complete RV Travel Planner. And I actually did have, Sean and I had a phone call with um, Brian and Luann Street. Their blog is called Where the Streets Wander and they came up with this book. And I was telling Luann how much I love it because I used to really be into scrapbooking. And so I felt like I could use this not only for tracking my campgrounds and my confirmation numbers and if I paid like some campgrounds require you like this Oregon State Park Florida State Park does the same thing you have to pay the full amount in advance but you will get a refund of all but like a ten dollar reservation fee if you cancel within a couple of days um, if you have to cancel so I can keep track of all that in here I have it on my spreadsheet too but I really like it here because I can keep this in the truck with me and have it handy if I need it. So I just wanna go through this book with you just a little bit and show you some of the really cool features of it. And I'll provide a link for how you can get one if you want. And I went ahead and got this nice spiral bound one with these tabs, but she does also sell it just as a digital download. And then you could print out the pages yourself if you want. But some of the really neat things about it is right inside the cover is called Just In Case. And you can use like a dry erase marker or a wax pencil to write like your current campground, where the nearest hospital is, the nearest urgent care, pharmacy, veterinarian, important things that you need to know. And then I'll just show you an example with January. First, there's just a calendar so I can kind of track out where I'm going to be. But then there's these pages where you actually put reservation, confirmation, how much of a deposit you paid, what the reservation or cancellation policy is, if you have a rewards. So you can put all this great information in here and have it written down. Now we stayed for a full month there, so I didn't have anything else for January. Now I'm working on February, and what I've done right now is uh, kind of uh, sorted out where we're gonna be. Um, also some highlights like our kids coming to visit and um, I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna put my reservations that I already have. Now another really neat thing about it is by each day you can put things to do, places to see. 
And then there's even a travel expense log if you want to keep track of all of your expenses. So you guys know we just did, uh, we do keep track and we just did our 2018 annual expenses. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link here for you. And we also have a blog and a download for that if you want to try to help it use it as a guideline. So those are my tips for how I do reservation planning. Um, I just want to add one extra note about boondocking. We're going to be doing a separate video on that because we're fairly new to boondocking or dry camping. If you're not familiar with the term, it means um, camping without hookups. And there's different ways that you can do that. You can do it um, partial hookups like the state park that I just talked about and walked you through that process. But you can also... Um, do it via a program called Harvest Host. So we just joined and the cool thing about that is it is now $99 a year and then you stay for free at, I think they have over 600 member. We just stayed at a winery. Tomorrow we're going to a distillery and next week we're gonna be staying at a museum. Uh, we've also stayed at a dairy farm slash petting zoo. So we had a camel right outside of our window. The neat thing about that is that you just get to meet local business owners, you stay at unique places, and it's just a little more interesting than staying the night in a rest stop. Um, so that's an option. A rest stop is an option depending on what state you're in. Or you can do what we're doing right now. This is our first time being uh, alone, just Sean and I, not with a group of people, just out in the middle of nowhere, basically. Right now, we're on Bureau of Land Management, BLM land. Uh, we found it uh, from friends of ours who gave us the GPS coordinates, but you can also use Campendium. So Campendium also shows you different boondocking sites. So I'll walk you through right now if I wanted to find where I was at right now. Okay, so I pulled up Sonoida, Arizona, and then maybe I'm gonna go, I wanna look for some free camping. Um, and then you can just click on these different things. You notice some of them don't have ratings and that's really okay because you can always look on other review sites like I showed you. So here's all these different ways to find BLM land right here. This one is in a national forest. People have posted some photos. There's only three reviews, but remember I told you there's other review sites that you can find. So again, if you have any tips and tricks that you use, please let me know any other websites that you prefer, and um, hopefully we can all learn from each other. I also uh, keep track of where we're at on Instagram, so please feel free to follow us, Chickory's Travels, on Instagram, and let us know if our paths are going to cross. We love to meet other RVers, and until then, safe travels.